Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Let's take a few minutes this morning to be the church together. This coming Sunday, we'll continue our journey through the book of Exodus, and so this week we'll continue our move through this book as well. Today's reading is a continuation of the story we heard on Sunday of the manna from heaven. If you want to read the entire story at once, I commend it to you. It's Exodus chapter 16. This morning, I'll be focusing on the later verses of the story. This is Exodus 16, verses 22 through 31. On the sixth day, the Israelites gathered twice as much food, that is, manna, two omers apiece. When all the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Today is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil, and all that is left over put aside to be kept until morning. So they put it aside until morning, as Moses commanded them, and it did not become foul, and there was no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. The Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you food for two days. Each of you stay where you are. Do not leave your place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called it manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Here ends the reading. On Wednesday, we reflected on an earlier portion of this reading, on how God's instructions are given within the context of an existing relationship, how God's grace is given, followed by a call that gives shape to that grace. Today, we hear about an all-too-human response. Immediately after God gives the people instructions through Moses, the people mess things up. Before this reading, God says, Don't collect more manna than you need and don't save it. So, of course, the people do those things, and the manna spoils. This time, they're told that on the day before the Sabbath, they should collect two days' worth and save it, so they don't have to collect on the Sabbath. So, what do the people do? They go out on the Sabbath to collect, and, of course, they find nothing. God's response is, of course, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and instructions? And when I hear God saying this, I hear it in a weary tone of voice, not angry as much as tired. God is laying it all out for them. Water, food, quails. They might not have everything they want, but they have everything they need. It's all a gift. And in response, God simply wants a trusting relationship. Perhaps that's the issue here. Perhaps the Israelites are learning to be God's people, learning to trust the God who freed them. The grace part is wonderful. The call part can take some getting used to. But the call is how we most fully experience God's grace. And God's grace is how we learn to trust God's call. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of relationship with you. Grant that we not only celebrate your grace, but also trust your call. Empower us to be your people, that all your will may be done. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen.